In this video, we are tracking a fast-moving and powerful storm across the Rockies and into the plains. Heavy snow, hurricane force winds, and more severe weather will be possible. Beyond that, we're looking at the forecast for the entire U.S. as the pattern looks more and more active. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Unfortunately, already we're talking about another powerful December system moving in. So like always, let's try to get this info out to as many people as possible. Go ahead and slap that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already already. And if you're feeling really helpful, go ahead and share this on social media. And once you're done with that, we're going to start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. We are looking at the infrared satellite so we can see the flow once again. Remember, the atmosphere is a fluid, and if we can understand the flow, we can see where everything's going to go. So first of all, you can see very clearly our trough coming in on the West Coast. But out ahead of that, you can see our big ridge coming in here. And this is going to lead to unseasonably warm temperatures for a lot of the Midwest, especially down there in the south into the southeastern portion of the US. We're going to be talking about a mini heat wave as some of this warm Gulf air comes all the way up as far north as into Iowa and Wisconsin. But all of that is just going to serve as jet fuel as this big storm system comes in from the west. So let's start talking about that on the weather model. All right, starting out over here on the west coast again, as we take a look at the NAM 3 kilometer model. Remember, this is what the radar could look like as we go into the future. And if you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always above my head up there in eastern time because that's where I'm from. We're still going to be seeing some rain showers down here in the southern portion of the Central Valley of California all the way down into the SoCal region. Uh, that moisture is going to be brushing up against the Sierra Nevada mountains and continuing to cause an incredible amount of snow. Uh, some people up here are going to see five feet of snow when this is all said and done. This is definitely the biggest snowstorm of the season for California. Enjoy it, I guess. I don't know what you do with five feet of snow. But eventually, this storm is going to zip over across the Rocky Mountains as we get into 4 a.m. on Wednesday. We've got heavy snow from Montana all the way down into New Mexico, and of course, it's going to be raining there on the southern side. But look at this. we got another giant area of moisture approaching the Pacific Northwest. This is going to lead to more rain and more snow, especially there in the Cascades as that moisture just brushes up against those mountains. Here's a look at that total snowfall map. And once again, man, over here in California, we're talking about on top of what you already have, uh, an additional 83 inches for some people. Two feet of snow for the higher portion of the Cascades. And of course, all the way up there into British Columbia, you guys are going to continue to see the snow. Some higher totals will be noted over here in Idaho and the Rocky Mountains. But for the most part, <laughs> all the snow is falling over here in California. And then of course, where it doesn't snow, it will be raining, especially on the actual coastline here from California all the way up into Washington. We can expect an additional one to two inches of rain as we go forward. Now, this powerful storm has caused some problems over here on the west, but it is going to cause even more problems once it makes it into the plains. So let's talk about that now. First of all, let's fast forward through the next day or so and look at that constant stream of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. You can literally clearly see it on the reflectivity here in the form of scattered showers. Ocean water is floating in the sky all the way up here into, you know, southern portions of Canada. Canada. And that just shows you how much warm air and, and moisture is coming up ahead of this storm. And of course, you can see our low pressure system coming into play here around 10 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And then if we keep pushing it forward, you can see it collide with that moist air right around 5 p.m. And we start seeing some thunderstorms going up here. Right on the border of Nebraska and Iowa, we could see a, an outbreak of severe thunderstorms. And that will continue to progress off to the east and to the northeast. It is December 14th, and we are talking about maybe a severe weather outbreak all the way up here in Iowa and maybe even southern portions of Minnesota and into Wisconsin too. We'll talk more about that here in a minute, but let's continue to watch the progression. There is your line of storms that's possibly going to be pro causing problems. Got a heavy area of rain up here in central Minnesota and on the backside we have extremely heavy snow. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to get some reports of thunder snow out of the uh, South Dakota and North Dakota areas as some of this stronger convection is moving into the cold air. Uh, but this is going to be a very quick hitting storm. Like this thing is zipping across here. Uh, so I don't expect much accumulation across the uh, northern plains, but some people could see five inches, certainly, maybe even a couple more than that. But yeah, this thing is moving fast as it goes off to the north and east, and you can very clearly see that undercutting uh, cool, dry air on the backside. And I I'm telling you, that wind is going to be strong. In fact, early in the morning tomorrow in the Rocky Mountains here, especially in Colorado and uh, New Mexico, we could see winds uh, around 100 miles an hour, especially in the higher elevations. But it doesn't stop there. Even as we get into the day tomorrow. Hurricane force wind gusts will be possible uh, in Colorado, in Kansas, uh, even you know possibly in the western portions of Oklahoma and Texas. And this is not associated with thunderstorms. This is going to be dry winds. So the wildfire risk out here is going to be incredible. And those winds do carry all the way up into the northern plains, into the Midwest, into the Great Lakes regions. Uh, by you know midnight tonight, we could be seeing once again close to hurricane force wind gusts over Lake Michigan here uh, with uh, wind gusts around 40 to 50 
mile an hour for everybody else, even all the way into Michigan. So that just shows you how powerful this storm is. And when you get air that's cold and dry and it's moving this fast and it crashes into the moisture we just saw, you do get severe weather. So we have to talk about that now. Okay, so we're gonna switch over to the HRRR model here so we can get a higher resolution view of what's going on. You can see very clearly here, like I've been talking about, all that warm, moist air working all the way up into Wisconsin. And then if I add some motion here, you can also see very clearly this giant area of cool, dry air coming in. It almost looks like a fist coming in to smack the uh, uh, the warm air out of the way. And this is a very dynamic system, okay? We've got dew points in the lower 50s right next to dew points in the single digits. It is a strong dry line that will almost certainly undercut the warm air and shoot it like a rocket into the sky, uh, producing thunderstorms, potentially even supercell thunderstorms. And it's going to go to the north and east very quickly. Uh, remember, uh, the higher the dew points over here, when those storms form, the worse the storms are going to be. Thankfully, right now, we are looking at a uh, upper 50s situation. If this was lower 60s or mid 60s, we'd be talking about a much different situation with a much more dangerous storm system uh, unfolding. I mentioned yesterday that if this were July or June or something like that, we would be ringing the bells. This would be a high risk event. We would be freaking out right now because this is one of the craziest um, upper air uh, systems I've seen all year. Okay. And we've had some crazy upper air dynamics this year the March tornado outbreaks, the one we just saw. Uh, this is even more insane than that. But once again, our saving grace is going to be that we don't have the moisture, the deep moisture that's necessary uh, for a big tornado outbreak. We call this tornado juice on this channel if you're new here. So that's why we can't rule out the possibility for some tornadoes up here. It's not likely, but we could see some, okay? And that goes all the way through southeastern portions of Minnesota into Wisconsin as well, maybe into northwestern portions of Illinois. We all got to watch out for this because if there are tornadoes, this storm is moving so fast, the tornadoes have to keep up and they could be moving like 80 miles an hour. Imagine a tornado moving in the forward direction at 80 miles an hour. That's going to lead to potentially, uh, you know, warning times being really small. Okay. You're not going to have much warning before it gets to you. Now, if we look at the reflectivity on the HRRR, I called the, the title of this video was, uh, you know, a strange storm is coming. This is the strangest looking storm I've ever seen. Of course, we've got the uh, cold air coming around the backside, causing the snow. We've got the classic comma head shape here, but look at this. This is like the most solid line of storms I've ever seen. I'm going to zoom into Missouri here so you can really see that. If this is what the radar actually looks like on, uh, you know, around 7 p.m. tomorrow, that's going to be one of the craziest radar shots of all time. If this is what happens in Kansas and Missouri, this isn't some end of the world kind of storm. However, it is going to be bizarre in that it's going to be kind of sunny and like warm and hot outside. Uh, you're, you're going to see a really dark cloud racing towards you from the west, and then you're going to get a huge burst of wind and like five seconds of rain and then all of a sudden it's cold. That's why this is so weird. It's such a solid shield of uh, precipitation. I've never seen anything like that. So we'll see. I just want to put this into motion real quick for the weather nerds out there. I mean, geez, man, look at that. And of course, here on the northern side where those storms start to become a little bit more individualized, uh, where they look like they could be a little bit more discreet, that's where we're looking at the potential for some tornadoes. The Storm Prediction Center is looking out for it because they do have that slight risk of severe weather. Uh, I think that this might be moved off to the north and east a little bit. So if you're even in the green area uh, during this storm system. Let's make sure we're weather aware tomorrow. Something significant is going to happen here and it might just end up being some straight line winds there in Iowa, but Iowa, you guys know straight line winds are nothing you need to balk at. We need to take it seriously and we need to be ready for it. All right, let's zoom out and talk about the whole United States now. First of all, you can see very clearly our ridge here and we're going to have much above temperatures for a lot of us as we go forward. Here we are at 1 p.m. tomorrow, okay, before the big storm actually moves into uh, the plains here. We're going to see temperatures in Iowa, I think, you know, probably around 40 degrees above average. It is going to feel like a mini heat wave here uh, through a lot of the central portion of the U.S., uh, all the way up into Canada as this massive ridge moves through. Look at this, man. Even up into the Chicago region, 1 a.m. on Thursday, it's going to be 40 degrees above average, which is insane. You don't see those temperature anomalies in December, man. And then, of course, as we go into the evening on Thursday, we're going to be well above average in the northeast here. We're going to be above average for a lot of the southeast as well, but you can see there's a clearly a little boundary here between uh, some very warm temperatures and some around normal temperatures back here in the Midwest. And that boundary is going to be kind of stalled out and we are going to see an influx of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and a constant uh, barrage of thunderstorms across this area, which could lead to flash flooding. Here's a quick recap of our storm.
storm, right? Here it comes across the Rocky Mountains. There's the severe weather threat in Iowa, the snow on the backside. Now there is a big warm sector here and on the front side of that, we might see some rain and snow showers in the Northeast, but it's nothing crazy. The main thing I wanna show you here is after this storm ejects off to the North and East, and we do have that cold air coming down, meeting with our stationary warm air down here in the Southeast, this little area of precipitation is going to be causing some heavy rain from Kentucky and West Virginia all the way back through Tennessee, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, maybe even portions of Texas. And if we take a look at the instantaneous flash rate, you can see that these are thunderstorms, okay? This is not just normal rain. These are going to be Gulf of Mexico moisture-induced thunderstorms producing very heavy rainfall. And take a look at like northeastern uh, Arkansas, for example, a place that was, you know, heavily impacted by the tornado outbreak. We could possibly see thunderstorms there from 7 a.m. on Thursday all the way through. We're still seeing thunderstorms at 7 a.m. on Saturday. Flash flooding is almost certainly gonna be a problem wherever that sets up, so we gotta watch that closely. Here's the total rainfall forecast from the Euro, and I'm telling you, somebody's gonna see an isolated six, seven, maybe eight inches of rain uh, come from this system. I'd watch out once again from Northeast Texas, especially through Arkansas, West Tennessee, uh, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, all across the Ohio River Valley here. Uh, somebody is going to see some flash flooding. Not everybody, it's gonna be isolated but somebody is so if you live in a flood prone area please prepare for this all right let's answer the most popular question in the comment section here am i ever going to get any snow <laughs> and that question usually comes from people on the east coast okay so let's see what's down the road here of course we have our flash flooding problem that will eventually move away and it is going to form a little bit of a storm over here in the northeast and it does look like some people could get some snow out of this so we're looking at sunday here around 1 a.m and of course a lot of upstate new york York and Western New York uh, could be seeing some moderate snow. Pretty much all of Massachusetts is going to be seeing some snow more than likely. And then, you know, we have this mixture of precipitation through Northern PA uh, into the uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island region. So we'll have to watch this closely. This is another kind of system where that low could actually really amplify here over the Atlantic Ocean and cause more snow than what we're originally thinking. But we are still kind of, you know, far away from this storm. Okay. I think the opportunity is there, but as of right now, I'm not, you know, calling any sort of forecast. Or, or telling you how much snow I think we're going to get. Uh, we'll talk about that in the near future. Now, as we go even further out into the future, we were talking in the last video about this big thing right here uh, turning into a big snowstorm for the Northeast. But like I said, the models are going to rock back and forth. It's going to go back and forth until we get closer to the event. And right now, it's showing a really strong storm off the coast of the Carolinas, but it doesn't show anything like a snowstorm. So when the Euro says nope, we turn to the GFS for hope. And the GFS says we might have a uh, Christmas Eve snowstorm up here in the Northeast uh, on Friday, December 24th. Once again, in that same region that we were just talking about from Massachusetts up through New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And then the next big signal for a storm doesn't come through until December 28th. And then once again, it's the same thing over here. That dividing line between the warm air and the cold air is pretty consistent according to the model runs here. But this would be a big storm uh, with possibly close to blizzard conditions in Boston uh, for this one. As of right now, I don't have any predictions of a big snowstorm, but we do, we are entering a very very active pattern to where anything can happen. And of course, just for fun, we do have to look at that fantasy snowfall map. Uh, you know, over the next 384 hours, <laughs> the GFS is saying from Albany all the way into Boston, uh, we're going to see 35 inches of snow. So take that with a grain of salt, but you know, take a screenshot. If you're a snow lover, take a screenshot, look at it every day. Let's manifest this happening. Okay. If you're a snow lover. Now, if you're not a snow lover, good news, this is more than likely very wrong. And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. The channel has surpassed 160,000 subscribers now, so thank you all for hitting that subscribe button and all that good stuff. I really do appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.